My name is Aisha Bryman and this is Election Brief. Within the third next 30 minutes, we have the latest update from the political scene. We are live on DSTV Channel 421 and GoTV Channel 125. All social media handles and around the world at myjoonline.com. Election headquarters is brought to you by Petrosol, your clean fuel in full quantity and chartered institute of management accountant, the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants together as the Association of International Certified Professional Accountants and German Ozone Medical Center, Alternative Therapy, Dental, Wellness and Beauty. Election headquarters for an informed electorate. Please do stay for details. The new patriotic party says it has identified four regions which will be key in helping the party to break the eight in the upcoming December polls. The party says Greater Accra, Central Region, Western and Western North Regions are on the front banner of the party as it begins its quest to hold on to power for the next four years. General Secretary of the party, Justin Kodia Frimpong, is entreating party supporters to close their ranks and unify to make the party's ambition less cumbersome. He was speaking at the launch of the party's central regional campaign team in Cape Coast. General Secretary of the Party, Miami to sue four regions. Said Omo Innovation, Miami, Yaka, Omo Innovation. Of Greater Accra, Central, Western, and Western of. But you should have four regions for strategic reasons. I know on December 7th, you have a budget, you have a red of one, you can have four regions. General Secretary of the MPP, Justin Kodia Frimpon, says whether the party will smile or will when the election results are declared would be dependent on the four regions. He says the party has been very strategic about the choices and decisions and it will require an all-hands-on-deck approach to deliver victory for the party. And then, Yeshia Ohai, we are constituency officers, we are regional officers. So, if we don't leave this room for keeping one another and starting a new chapter, we should forget about power. Today to mark a new beginning for Central Region. <laughs> and then a new fool, Ayako, and Topo, and we chant over there. Could you a bit in your bar? There should also be discipline in the party. So, regional party, no, a discipline. Now, I'm going to open this for my. The, party also the party requires discipline. If the regional party is disciplined, the constituency party will be disciplined as well. In truth, from 2017, when the party won power, it's not everyone who can say that he or she has got something from the party. But I tell you that the opportunities will come if the party continues to stay in power. It is better that way than to allow power to slip through our fingers. We may end up losing at both ends. But you see, and no one that disappointment alone does not mean said and support that. Central Regional Minister Justin Amari Godassan called for unity in order for the party to achieve its set targets. We should learn to forgive ourselves. We can't afford to be holding on to grudges among ourselves. I dare say that should we come together as a formidable force, the 2024 elections will be a walkover for us. We have a child to keep, 
a charge is to unify the party and discharge the obligations of the party. The party says, based on data, the only reason why it will lose an election in Ghana is when a party sets in and entreated the party folk to guard against that. We'll be going uh, deep into this to find out what the strategy is and what makes these four regions very special. We'll be speaking with the Director of Communications for the Dr. Baumia campaign team. He'll be joining us very soon. Meanwhile, Minority Female Caucus of Parliament have, uh, has given a one-week ultimatum to the Ashanti Regional Chairman of the NPP, Bernard Ndjubwesiak, also known as Chairman Wunjumi, to retract what they describe as a, the derogatory, unacceptable and baseless remarks he made against Professor Nana Jenopokwajeman, running mate of the NDC flag bearer John Mahama. The Minority Caucus issued the ultimatum at a press conference addressed by Deputy Minority Whip and MP for Adam Comfort do you could you? She called on Chairman Wuntumi and other persons who engaged in such attacks to publicly apologize to Professor Jane Nano Pokwajam. It is deeply distressing and unacceptable that in this day and age, a woman of Professor Nana Jane Opoku Adjiman's stature and accomplishments will be subjected to such baseless and diamond attack on her marital status and origin. Such comments not only reflect a profound lack of respect for women in leadership position, but also perpetuate harmful stereotypes and discrimination. The recent allegations made by the chairman Wu to me regarding Professor Nana Jane Opokwajima, marital status and regional origin are reprehensible and without merit. These unfounded accusations only serve to the further undermine her credibility and integrity as politician and academic. The Minority Female Caucus is also describing the allegations made by Chairman Wun to me regarding the marital status and regional origins of Professor Nana Jenopokwajeman as condemnable and without basis. It is deeply distressing and unacceptable that in this day and age, a woman of Professor Nana Jenopoku Adjiman's stature and accomplishments will be subjected to such baseless and diamond attack on her marital status and origin. Such comments, Ghanaians deserve leadership who uphold dignity and focus on meaningful progress for the nation as representatives of the people and advocate for gender equality, it is imperative that we stand united in denouncing such reprehensible behavior and demand strict accountability from those who perpetrate it. We call upon Chairman Wun to me and all other individuals who engage in such deplorable conduct to publicly apologize to Professor Nana Jane Opokwajima and refrain from making any further derogatory comments. We are giving Chama Wun to me seven days ultimatum to publicly retract and apologize to Professor Nana Jane Opokwajima and extend the same apology to all women in Ghana, or we will advise ourselves.
Well, the women's wing of the NDC in the Ashanti region have also waded into this controversy. They have also given a one-week ultimatum to Ntribuisi, a co-chairman of the NPP in the Ashanti region, to retract and withdraw his statement. Women's wing. I am the quarter women organizer for the NDC. And we are telling the Ashanti Regional Chairman for the MPP to provide evidence to back his claims. Other than that, he should come and retract and apologize. Does it matter where one comes from before you can become, a, a, what do we call it, a vice president of this nation? What we want is whether the person is experienced, whether the person is competent, and the, 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 the women have Ghanaians at heart. What are we looking for? So we are telling the Ashanti Regional Chairman, Chamaun to me, to come and, and, and retract his statement and apologize. The party MPP, no? Yeah, who's a mumma? It's a summer year can I pay? Yeah, can't you make a man in a young command is in ma? A son, so won't be in the MPP, no? A mum fan man, yes, she. Well, I've been joined by Dr. Kwesi Boateng Amache, who is a political science analyst with the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. Uh, he'll be telling us more on this. But first, let's take a break on Jury News uh, election brief. We'll be back with more. Welcome back. We've been joined by Dr. Macho Boateng. He's a political science lecturer at the Department of History and Political Science at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. Grateful for your time, Doc. Um, I know that you teach governance and in governance you talk about a level playing field for women and men. Now, there's been calls for a lot of women to partake in political activities. What do you make of all of this controversy with the Ashanti region chairman calling the running mate of the NDC names. Hello, Doc. Kindly unmute for me. All right, so Dr. Amacho Boateng is trying to fix this line to join us with this conversation. It's all about the NDC running mate, Professor Jenano Pokwajeman, who the chairman of the NPP in the Ashanti region has been calling names. Today, there's been a strong request by women, the women wing of the NPP in the Ashanti region, and also the women caucus, the NDC caucus in parliament, calling for him to retract and apologize to the professor for calling her names. Dr. Amache Boateng has joined us on the phone right now. Dr. Amache, I was earlier asking uh, what you feel about um, all of this, especially as you teach governance and in which you, you advocate that a lot of women also uh, partake in some of these leadership and political positions. What do you make of all of this? Uh, thank you for the opportunity, and let me say good afternoon to your viewers. Uh, what comes, you know, uh, to one immediately after, you know, listening to comments of that nature has to do with uh, overtly politicizing ethnicity. 
and also personally attacking an individual. You know, by by coming up with with you know a most sensible sort of a, a I mean concocted story about an individual. You 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 guys despicable. You wouldn't want to think about it yourself. You know, the one that has to do with some sort of engagement with former President Mahama. It's such a terrible thing for anyone to, you know, come up, especially something of this nature. Where is your evidence? Where is your evidence? It's really unprecedented, you know. Uh, the level at which this is, you know, sort of a manifesting, individual involved, a chairman of uh, a major political party at a regional level. You want to demonstrate integrity. You want to demonstrate leadership because you are part of the ruling class. But if, 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 if this information is coming from such a person, then right away you, you, you know exactly what is happening. But then the other thing has to do with overtly politicizing ethnicity, and this is dangerous for our politics. The Constitution of Ghana does not necessarily prescribe where one should come from to become uh, an officer of the state, whether at the level of the presidency, the vice, or any other significant rule. I think the bottom line is that one should be a Ghanaian. So how can you uh, analyze someone's personality and, 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 and get down to you know, tell us where we come from. Here in Ashanti region, there is this saying that you don't disclose where or one's origin. There's a saying that you don't disclose one's origin because uh, Ashantis know that intrinsically, the people who call themselves Ashantis, if you were to dig down to the root, many of us may not necessarily have originated from this place. So traditionally, culturally, as a nation-building principle, Ashantis don't do that. And and here we are dealing with Chairman me and and he is the one coming up with such controversy. So it, it leaves a lot to be desired. Are there implications of such um, utterances on the political fortunes of his party? I, I, I expect I expect something like that to happen because uh, uh, you know people people will be shocked. Sure that, you know, we have these people operating at the highest level of the party. What happened? And then the party came up with an individual like that who showed no decorum in, in, their, in their public conduct. So, yes, we expect, we expect you know, uh, I mean, the party, the party to, you know, uh, be interested in this, and then we expect that people will react to it. You know, at, at, at the level, at the level of the part, at the level of the national politics, in fact, we we, we are able to react to this issue. Dr. Amache I'm grateful for your time. He's a political science lecturer at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. Now from Tamale in the northern region, the Joy News Ghana Connect Town Hall train makes a stop at the Garden City of Kumasi. At 3 p.m., we'll be engaging residents at the Presbyterian Church premises in Edum as they make their voices heard in the crafting of manifestos by the political parties. Let's go live to Kumasi now. My colleague Blazet Soga is there for us. Blazet, paint a picture of how prepared we are for this uh, town hall meeting. We'll be getting uh, Blazed Sogata to join us shortly with more on this. But first, uh, we're talking about the town hall meeting after a successful one in, in Tamale. Uh, at 3 p.m., we're giving the opportunity to the people in Kumase. We are stopping at Edum Presbyterian uh, School. And then they will be telling us more on what they want on, in the manifestos of the political parties. Well, uh, we'll be going back to Kumase right now. Let's go back to the NPP that says it has identified four regions that will help the party break the eight. I've been joined by communications director of the Dr. Baumia campaign team 
Dennis Miracle Tsabwaji. I'm grateful for your time, Dennis. So what is so special about these four regions? You're talking about the Western, Western North, Cape Coast, and Western region. Well, I believe you mean Central region, uh, when you say Cape Coast. And then um, I think fundamentally, uh, the issue that every political party has, has a stronghold in, in this country, that's, that's without doubt. And so when the general secretary um, speaks of the Sakra Central region, Western and Western North region, it's quite obvious that um, these are regions that are going to be critical in, 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 in determining the outcome of the December um, seventh election. I mean, the two leading candidates are both from the northern part of Ghana. And so, straight away, you know, it should be easy to um, figure out how the battle is going to go in the five northern regions. The NDC is quite strong in the voter region, without doubt. And the MPP is, is pretty strong in their shanty and anything. Like so the general secretary making that point fundamentally is saying that these regions, Western, Western North, and um, Greater Akai and Central are crucial in, in breaking the tie and actually determining the outcome of, of, of the elections. And these are areas that we in the MPP um, would not take for granted at all. And we are going to do everything we have to do to, to build a formidable relationship with the people in this region. To, to make sure that we have their vote. In the last elections, the NDC, for instance, has been making some progress in Western North, for instance. Uh, what's the strategy to be able to uh, compete with your opponent, your major opponent? Well, it's simple. You let the people um, believe in you. Let the people um, feel that you care for them, be there for them. Um, provide them with their needs, let the people feel your, their, your presence in, in their region. Fortunately, we have a contest between a former president, one that has been president before, and clearly um, should be able to go back to these regions and tell them what he did when they gave him the mandate previously. And so it's going to be simply based on vision. It's going to be on the credibility of, of our candidates. It's going to be on the integrity of the candidates that we are presenting. And we, we are quite convinced that we have a, a very formidable candidate in Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. He is trustworthy. His um, level of credibility and integrity is high. And that is what the people are looking forward to going into the future. The people are clearing their minds that challenges would be there. But when the challenges pop up, who is that single person that um, has the capacity and ability to drive the people out of the challenges? towards progress, and that's what they see in Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. And this is what we are going to use as our biggest strength going into the elections in these regions. A candidate they can trust, a candidate they can believe in, a candidate that is ready to harness on all the talent in, in, in across this country towards growth and progress for, for the people of Ghana. Well, we'll see. We'll see how things go. Thank you so much, uh, Dennis Miracles Abouaji. He's the communications director of the Dr. Baumia campaign team. Let's now hear from you, the electorate, because uh, election headquarters is for an informed electorate. Today's voters' voice is from La Paz Bus Terminal, where some Ghanaians have been sharing with us what will influence their vote. Omiya was very excellent when it comes to digital aspect. In this time, Baumia was very good. And everybody is talking about Baumia. Everybody is talking about Baumia. And because of uh, our electricity consumptions, people are also calling Mahama back. Because if Mahama was there, the Dumso has been fisted. <laughs> so people are trying to vote back to John Damani Mahama. But as I'm talking to you right now, when we talk about democracy, democracy will help us to understand the specific person who can lead this country. It's not a personality. It's not a personality. It's not a person who has done many roles or infrastructures. It's about, it's about a person who will lead this country to a perfect and good expectation. Personally, I will vote for Dr. Mahamadou Baumia. 
Because this time, our digital platform, Baumia was very expert to bring certain vision on board. Because But Dubai or Moyes are winning now, honey. Dubai, no, 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 Let's now cross over to Kumasi. We're blessed that the guy is standing by for us to connect us to the Joy New Star Ghana, Ghana Connect Town Hall meeting. Blessed Soga, how prepared are we for 3 p.m. today? Hello, Blessed. All right, so there seems to be internet connection problem. Yes, so we have well, Blazer Soga on now. Blazer, tell us more. Well, uh, Aisha, we're still uh, here at um, Edum Kumasi. Well, of course, we're expecting that in a few hours, uh, minutes actually from now, um, we will be seeing that interaction among civil society groups, uh, of course, organized in partnership with Star Ghana Foundation, where the aim is to interact with the electorate for them to influence um, the manifesto, uh, which many political parties will be coming up with ahead of the 2024 general elections, is the reason for which uh, we're bringing a Ghana Connect town hall. And the expectation is that the electorate will be able to interface with the political parties and other stakeholders. And through that process, we will be able to hear directly from the electorate as to what matters to them and what can be done uh, going into the elections. All right, so blessed Soga with that from Kumase at 3 p.m. You have nowhere to go. Stick on this channel. And if you are in Kumase, head to the Presbyterian uh, premises uh, where you can make your voice heard for political parties to include in their manifestos. This is your election brief. It's on election headquarters. Election headquarters is for uninformed electorates. Do enjoy the rest of our programs. <laughs>